In this video, we're going to make homemade biodegradable microgreen trays out of bioplastic and talk about making hydroponics plastic free. We also grew microgreens in frozen dinner trays, looking at things a little different. Started some hydroponics in glass jugs. Grew radish in a hummus bowl. Talk about beginners starting with radish microgreens. We compared water versus nutrients in some hydroponic microgreens. Checked if there's any algae in it. Talked about how much I grow and what I do with it. And we also show you how to make your own bioplastic at home. Alright, let's get started. This is bioplastic. Not the green tray. The little white ones I grew these microgreens in. It's not like the flexible stuff you saw me make out of cornstarch and glycerin. These are commercial products. Which are good. You can compost them at home. So that shows the industry is working on it. Now these little white trays, I made myself. It was pretty easy, and finding products like this kind of gives you hope. I mean, if you can just make anything, the sky's the limit. Now this bioplastic has a low melting point, 150 degrees. It says it's non-toxic, moldable, eco-friendly, and biodegradable. Now it's white until you heat it up to 150, then it turns clear. Then it's moldable just like putty. I put them in these hot dog trays. Just mashed it in there, smoothed it out. And in about 5 or 10 minutes, it cools down, turns white again. I just pop it out of the tray. And then planted some microgreens in it. In about a week, we had loads of microgreens. And it was grown in a plastic container that I made myself that's biodegradable. This was really easy, and it's just another option for us. I wonder what else I can make with it. Off-grid hydroponics is awesome. Growing your own food, no weeding, no tilling, cheap and easy. But everywhere you look, it's plastic, plastic, plastic. And a lot of people over the years have asked me, is there any way to do it without the plastic? And I didn't know, because just about every type of hydroponics out there has plastic. Except maybe growing in a mason jar and even that has a plastic net cut. And that led a lot of people to getting discouraged. So I'm not here to argue who's right or wrong or change anyone's mind. I just want to help more people. So a lot of the things that you're going to see are not tutorials. They're experiments. I don't have all the answers for you. I'm working through it. I might not even figure anything out. But just relax, sit back, have fun. Enjoy the ride, because I think if we really can figure some things out, we can make a change in the world. Day 43 of looking at things a little differently. Frozen dinners. Yeah, I eat frozen dinners. Don't judge me. It's nostalgic. It takes me back to my childhood. We were poor. One of these would feed 10 of us for a week. Now that we're well off, we can split it between two of us. But I started looking at the container differently. Could it be used for something else? I decided to grow some greens. So we cleaned the containers, started putting clay pebbles in them, and inspected each one to make sure they were just right. And this process took about three days, but it was well worth it. Then we just added some nutrient solution, sprinkled some seeds on it, spritzed it, covered it, and overnight... Not really. I just kept them on a shelf, kept them covered until they germinated. And then I just kept a little nutrient solution in the bottom, kept them fed. Before long, I had platefuls of greens, and I started looking at frozen dinners a little different. Keep on growing. Wow, look at these radish microgreens. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Now you can do this too. My son grew these and he's only been doing this for a few weeks. 
and he used a hummus container. Just like what I've been showing y'all, we put the clay pebbles, some nutrients, sprinkle the seeds, and he left the lid on until the seeds sprouted. And he put them under the grow lights with the rest of the plants, and it took about a week. When the nutrients got low, he just added a little more. And look at this. Now wouldn't that make a great centerpiece at your next party? Now him using that tall container really helped because these smaller containers that I used, when the radish got to about this size, they would all fall over. So I would just harvest them at that point. And they were okay, but they were nowhere near the size of these. So the tall container helped with the radish. And we're wondering what other plants this would work with. I mean, look at those roots. Nice, white, no algae. This is normal microgreen. You all have seen that. This is about the point when everybody harvests them. And this is the massive radish microgreens. So if you're spending money on seeds, which one do you want? This or this? Yeah, me too. Keep on growing. Alright, if you're new to microgreens and you're just starting out, you might get tempted to grow a lot. But unless you're selling them at the market or giving them to your friends, you want to start out small so you don't waste a lot. Seeds are expensive, so don't start out in those big 10-20 trays, especially for microgreens that are really spicy and pack a punch. You don't need much of those in a salad or soup or your spring rolls. That's why these little bottles that my son grew these radish in are perfect. Each one is just about a single serving. A great size for one salad. So you can grow just a few like this, and if it's just you eating, you don't need to harvest them all at one time. You'd have enough here to take you through the week. And as you eat a couple, replant those, it only takes a couple minutes. Then you'll always have fresh greens that you grow yourself whenever you want. Microgreens make it easy. A lot of people keep telling me you can grow microgreens in just water. They say you don't need nutrients. So I decided to try some. I used to do that years ago. And when these were about a week old, I planted some more pak choy and perlite with nutrients. Now this morning when I went to water them, I noticed quite a difference. Now the ones in water are 13 days old, almost two weeks. And the ones in the perlite are only six days old. You can see the little black dots, those are the seed holes. So you know these guys just sprouted. Now if I hold them side by side, they look about the same size, but some of the ones in the water are starting to yellow, and these look good. So they're both ready to harvest. And I guess people were right, I can grow microgreens in just water. It just depends on the speed and the quality that I want. Two weeks for this, or six days for this. Hmm. You can't do that. Uh -huh. Uh, do what? That. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can't do hydroponics with clear containers. Hmm. You gotta cover them up. Or paint them or something. It's gonna get all funky. You'll get algae, all kinds of stuff. What's wrong with you? Everyone knows that. But I like seeing the roots grow. No. Suit yourself. Don't say I didn't warn you. Hmm. Yay. This is how I fool you. The dark side of hydroponics. Now people see all of this growing and ask, how do you eat it all? Or how do you preserve it? Most of the time we just eat everything fresh, but not all at once. Just because you have all of this doesn't mean you have to eat it at one time. Just like this radish, it's ready to go when some other plants aren't. So we'll harvest the radish, replant it, get it going again. 
but some other plants we just pick off of, like the scale and cress and the cilantro. Add some tacos. Now this one grew just as good as the one next to it, but we're eating off of it. And then when I get ready to film, I just turn it around. I put the good side forward. Other ones go missing in the back, but from the front, you would never know it if you weren't looking for it. And when we're done filming, we start to harvest. Some plants go missing, some shelves are empty, but we're still replanting, starting the process all over again. So it's not all at once. It's having the things you need when you need it. Easy plastic made from plants. I want you to make some. I used it to make this and this and lots of other things. Now I doubled the recipe, but you can do just half of this. And it's not new. This has been around for a while. You can just search the internet for it. And I haven't seen anything recent, so I think people stop because it's not waterproof. So when they hit that hurdle, everyone stopped. And a lot of you came up with some really cool ideas. So I want to keep playing with it, testing it. And I want a lot of you to do it too. Because thousands of people trying something out goes a whole lot faster than one. Now the problem with modern plastics is it lasts like 400 years. And this, out in nature, will be gone in a few days. And I like that. So I'm going to play with it and see if there's any benefits that can help me. I don't need it to last four centuries. I just need it to last long enough to grow a plant. So you guys look at it, play with it, experiment, have fun. Let me know what you come up with. And keep on growing.